so today, again, it's, I'm going to start off predominantly as a, a fat loss um, seminar today because of this stuff, again, uh, that will be very relevant to, um, that I haven't touched on specifically as, as a subject. Uh, we've talked about sugar and how sugar affects fat loss through insulin, etc. But it does become a lot more technical that when you start to look at individual sugars. We all carbohydrates. Uh, Carbohydrates are a synergy of sugars. So um, if you look at normal table sugar, that's something called sucrose. And sucrose is 50% glucose and 50% another sugar called fructose. And fructose is predominantly a sugar that we automatically align to fruit. You know, when we hear fructose, it's fruit sugar, which is uh, aka a natural sugar. But does that mean that it's any better for us? And tonight you will learn that. No, fructose is one of the biggest uh, detrimental um, elements or food molecules that we consume in regards to fat gain. Um, for every one gram of fructose that you put in your mouth, that's one gram of fatty acid that you produce. So that's for everyone. So one apple might contain eight grams of fructose, so that's eight grams of fat that you've just manufactured. You can't avoid that, you can't do anything about it, but I'll take you through some of the science of how that happens and why breakfast cereals and 97% fat free and 99% fat free foods are one of the biggest problems associated with the fat loss, um, I suppose, enigma that we struggle with. Um, because we've got a couple of new individuals that haven't been here before, I'll just paint a quick picture of what a fat cell looks like and how it works for both the team at the back. So first, this is the fat cell. Well, he's happy at the moment because he's going to be fed. So you, most people when they attend the health club, for, they attend for the wrong reasons. They attend for weight management. Um, now a health club's not the place to be if you want weight, weight management. That's the first thing you want to paint a picture of. You want weight, weight management, the right place to be is the kitchen, because that's where it all happens. The health club will aid in making you feel better, aid in tone, bone mineral density, etc. But it's not going to be the key success of the fat loss. And this is why, because it's about chemistry. Here's your fat cell, and this is the things that everyone's trying to reduce. What we call a free fatty acid, or the fat currency. You've got to get these out of that cell into your bloodstream and then you've got to get them to the only place that we can physically use fat as an energy which is called the muscle. So we have to try and drive something to get this out of there, get it into there, transport it to there and burn it in here. So there's something here called the beta receptor. The beta receptor is the lock and key, the ATM machine. that will allow you to make a withdrawal. But the beta receptor, as we said, a lock and key, needs a hormone to bind to it called adrenaline. There's adrenaline and norepinephrine, another one. Once either of those bind to that, they are invited to come into the cell. That doesn't mean we're fat burning, far from it. That means we're inside the fat cell, but now we have to make do with these, get them out of there. And there's one specific, there are, there's a whole plethora of chemical exchanges. CMP, which is called cyclic adenosine monophosphate, which then leads to another specific biochemical cascade, where we end up with this enzyme called hormone-sensitive lipase. Lipo, obviously fat. This is the mothership of all. This binds to these free fatty acids and allows these dollar signs to now be outside of the cell. So that's great because it now means we've got the ability to try and burn this stuff. <clears throat> these fatty acids are transported via a protein molecule to the muscle cell. Still, we're not there burning it yet. It's got to then be invited once again inside the muscle cell. And that is done by 
a specific thing called carnitine. Carnitine transports the fatty acids or the dollar signs into the muscle cell to the powerhouse called the mitochondria and then we go through a process called beta oxidation. Layman's terms, fat burning. You are now fat burning. So that's how difficult fat loss is in a nutshell. If you can get that happening with all these trillions of cells that we've got that are what we call adipose tissue or fat cells, we're doing well. But soon as one of these chemical pathways is hindered, there's that much fat burning. The problem with a lot of Western world is that it's not only the difficulty of obtaining the fat burning process, but as they're trying to fat burn without even realizing their fat mat, they're making fat deposits. And this is where fructose is really a no-no, and you'll see why. Um, I won't go into insulin a lot, so I don't have to backtrack. Um, we talk about this is the chemical pathway that needs to be undertaken to aid in this fat burning enigma taking place. Soon as we have insulin secreted into our bloodstream and insulin we know we hear the diabetic community. Um, insulin's job is to shuttle any sugar, glucose, fructose into cells. So we said this is a cell here, a fat cell, and a fat cell is more than happy to eat this stuff. So what insulin is, it is the, the shuttle bus that binds to the sugars, glucose and fructose and transports them into the cell. Because the whole role of insulin is to decrease what we call our blood plasma and glucose levels. So when you hit blood sugar, blood sugar is simply glucose. So any time there's glucose available in our blood that is higher than the, what our body sets as a normal level, bang, it's got to be done, something has to be done with it. It has to be transported either into one of two places. A muscle cell where we can store glucose and secondly, this cell, the fat cell. Once insulin is about, we're definitely making deposits into a fat cell but we're not enabling any withdrawal from the fat cell. It, you physically can't do it. Because once this hormone insulin is in the bloodstream, what can't work, as we said here, is the key concept of fat loss, hormone sensitive lipase, goes on strike. It's physically inhibited. It can't be manufactured. So if it can't be manufactured, there's no fat burning whatsoever. So therefore, the whole synergy complex um, equation of fat loss is based truly on two things, insulin and hormone sensitive lipase. So unless you have your diet 100% right, you can come into a health club and you can build yet against a brick wall and you get fitter, which is awesome. You may change the amount of muscle tissue you carry, but you won't be able to tap into here if you don't eat effectively. And this is where most people unfortunately go wrong. So that is now something you're aware of. And now that you're aware of it, if you continue to, I suppose, um, de deny, defy, whichever word you want to, the logistics of the science behind it, well, then you're negligent. And then you've really got to start the question. Now, do you really want to obtain fat loss? You know, because there's many people that come and see you and say, I want weight loss, fat loss. But the question then is, the, one of the first ones I fire, do you really? Well, are you aware of how hard it is? You've seen how hard it is. And that's a 168 hour a week job. That's not, you know, three or four hours a week and you'll get fat loss. Three or four hours a week is what most people will do in a health club that are our regular attenders. But that, that's nothing in the ballpark, you know? So this is where you've got to get your head around it. If you're coming here expecting miracles, walk out of here now and cancel your gym membership because it's not going to happen. Once you get your food right and the gym right, that's when it comes together. But the food thing is critical. There's, we looked at the fat cell and it's what it 
cold and how we've got to get it to a muscle tissue to go boom, burn. There's certain things called, they're called blood transporters, okay, which means glucose transporters. And there's, as we said, they're the little shuttle buses that take these things to certain cells. And we won't go into it too much tonight because we did it the other week, but there's five that are predominant for us. Glute one, three and four are to do with glucose only. And, and glute transporter two and five have something to do with this nasty sugar called fructose. So this is where I'm going to spend most of my time tonight talking about the fructose and, and how it inhibits fat loss, but also is a fantastic fat maker. With fructose, it's an invisible sugar. What that means is we don't have systems in the human organism that can deal with it effectively. So it's not like glucose that we need to drive the brain, the lungs. Fructose isn't required in the human body for anything. It doesn't make anything work, function. It just makes one thing for us, fat. More specifically, fatty acids which will lead to an increase in blood fats. Or triglycerides, which unfortunately therefore leads to an increase in very low density lipoproteins, something that you hear about when you have a blood test done about cholesterol. Okay, so very low density lipoproteins are the lousy, nasty ones. Okay, we wanted to have an increase in the ability to have a higher, high density lipoprotein, good ones, ones that actually transport this molecule, transports fats to the liver so we can break them down. These things here, these very low, uh, low density lipoproteins, just deposit them in the arteries. So this is where we get those plaque arteries and fats that are deposited, leading to something called arterial sclerosis, aka hard, unpliable arteries that just get really congested with gunk and then have a detrimental effect on the ability to have the heart lungs working effectively that therefore leads to synergistically heart attack. So again, it's, they, this is where all of this works. And fructose is, not only in my eyes, but in most endocrinologists and biochemists' eyes, the silent killer. Because it's in every bloody thing. The sweeter something is, the more fructose is in it. So you just do a simple close your eyes and think, how sweet a, a berry, like a blueberry, a raspberry, a blackberry, they've got a little bit of tart in them. So they're not very sweet at all. Uh, grapefruit, not real sweet at all. So meaning that it's got a lesser amount of fructose in it. This is just an example. If you go and eat an unripe banana, not very sweet at all. Yeah, you've got a ripe banana and it's almost sickly sweet. It's so ripe, it's not funny. The chemical alteration in the, in the sugars has been altered and that fructose is simply, the sweeter something is, you've got to start to think about this before you have any. The sweeter something is, the more fat you're making. It's that simple. And I've got these things here, just as an indicator of how much sugar and specifically fructose is hidden in foods. And we'll go through that short. We look at, as I said, sucrose, which is your normal table sugar, which is in bloody everything. So it's 50% glucose, which doesn't go unscathed, that is seen by the body. 50% is fructose. Which isn't. I call it an invisible sugar. Because it's not insulin dependent. That means it doesn't need the, the shuttle bus to transport it anywhere. It bypasses it. Fructose goes straight from your mouth. In there, it goes. I'm not a great drawer. Just so that's our liver. Okay, and here's our esophagus, and here's our tummy, and here's our small intestines. 
Here's our bloodstream. So fructose, this is how it works. It goes straight down here, through the stomach, small intestine, absorbed there and transported straight to the liver. The liver is an unbelievable factory, machine. It, with every one gram of fructose that we consume, remember one tablespoon of sucrose is five grams of carbohydrate or sugar, so two and a half grams of that total is fructose. So therefore, just in one tablespoon of sugar, we've got two and a half grams of fructose that's transported straight to the liver. The only place in the body where we've got this receptor to take fructose in. It's an unbelievably complex issue that takes place here where all of that fructose, every last drop, is converted straight to a fatty acid or a fat. I'll just use fat to make it simple. We, fats are stored in two places. In, in the muscle, we store very little. It's called intramuscular fat. And secondly, in the fat cell. Now, with fat cells, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. A muscle doesn't, they're only like minute stools that we can have in here. <coughs> so the question now is, well, I've got two things I can, can do. I can control insulin through the amount of carbohydrate and sugar I eat, and I can control the amount of fat I'm making by how much fructose I'm consuming. So am I telling you that eating fruit is bad? No, I'm not. But what I'm definitely saying is if you consume too much of it, well, you're just making fat deposits left, right and centre. That's, that's just using fruit as an example. But fruit isn't the bad fellow here. Fruit has lots of fibre, lots of phytochemicals, and antioxidants. Fibre takes up a lot of mass. So in one apple, you're looking at about 8 grams of fructose. So as we said, there's 8 grams of fructose, that's 8 fat grams we're making. But you look at outside of the benefits of that food, it's pretty hard to say, well, I'm not going to be a fruit person because it's going to be, you know, make too much fat. But there's people that live on fruit. You know, fruit only diets, and they're fat free, so it's got to be good for me. That's one of the things that's, again, that's marketing, and that's, uh, you know, the market, food politic individuals that are really making life hard for you because you're making them very rich. They're not going to tell you to stop doing it. Fat cells and fat manufacture are something you can control if you want to. We're going to use these four little examples here. I wish I had some breakfast cereal because that's the killer of them all. But just here, we've got Ribena. And look at the marketing. So Ribena, black currant fruit drink. No artificial colour, no artificial flavours, natural sugars only. You know the best thing to do with this is throw it straight in the bin. It's just an excuse to break shit. Because there's 25 grams of carbohydrate here in total. And it says underneath that where they're well listed, it's 25.5 grams of carbohydrate per serve. And serving size is 250 mils. So in here there's 500, that means there's two serves. That means there's 51 grams of sugar in here. 51 grams, it's fruit, remember it says here, it's natural, fruit sugar. 51 grams of fructose in here. That's 51 grams of fat you've just put in your body, just there. But it's fat free. That's, see how they market these things? 97% fat free lollies, 99% fat free yogurt, 99% fat free biscuits. It's they're riddled with fructose and this is just killing our society. These hidden sugars. Fructose, 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 because we don't have the ability to deal with it. So there's 51 grams of fat deposits there. Now this is a no sugar power rate. Carbohydrate total, 0 0.6 sugar, zero. No grams of fat, no deposits of fat, nothing at all. But sodium, electrolytes, magnesium, and all of those things that are enabling muscle contraction, etc. So that's not bad if you're exercising for electrolytes. Here's another one, it's, it's cousin. Normal power rate, isotonic drink, you need it for energy, don't we? So here we go. Serves. Uh, serving size is 600 mils. 
So look, before I go any further, I want to ask you, perception. What's better for you? This or the juice, the apple juice on the end or the Ribena? What would you use just as a group? You know, no right or wrong, I'm not here to assess. I'm trying to teach you. What would you think is a better drink? The apple juice? Okay, let's take this one out of the equation because you know that's a good one. Just do that and just pretend for all intents and purposes this is a can, a bottle, 600 ml bottle of Coca-Cola, straight. No diet, just straight. Now I want you to tell me which one you would think is the best choice out of those. Okay, the second one. Is that what everyone would believe would be the case in regards to fat loss and fat manufacture? No. Okay, what do you think would be best? I'd say the last one. Okay. Well, I'll tell you which one is this one, the can of Coke, the bottle of Coke, because there's no fructose in it. These here are absolute disgusting products that should be taken off the market for Fat loss kids and stuff will go to school and they'll have an apple and they'll have a roll up and they'll have a, an apple juice because it's natural sugar. This one here, 350 mils, that's one serve, so you know the kitty will drink it at morning tea. Carbohydrate total 40, sugar total 39. 39 grams of fructose. There's a 40 gram deposit in the fat cell. That's only 350 grams. Remember, we're looking at um, this one's 500 grams, so there's, per capita, there's more fat in this bottle than there is in this. It's disgusting. It's absolutely horrendous. It's criminal negligence that this is happening. But you're going to know, you can, you can turn on any TV channel and there'll be some <coughs> dicky dietitian saying, oh, you know, eat this and eat that and it's good for you, it's 99% fat free, etc. As a, and you've heard me say this before, and I have to be, I, I go off on tangents, but I do, but, you know, I, I do believe that the dietitians, you know, statisticians, they really need to go back to first year science and study chemistry, biochemistry, human physiology and endocrinology, because they're caught up in all the numbers and all the marketing and bandwagon from all the associations that we, have, associations that we align ourselves to that send our paraphernalia. It's just junk. As I said, one of the greatest things you can use is called the palate. The sweeter something is, the more dangerous it is for you. But, so this one here, power run, as I said, this is the cousin. So this one's got one serve, 45 grams of carbohydrate, 35 grams of sucrose. Remember we looked at sucrose, is 50% glucose, 50% fructose. So that means only half of that total so 17 and a half grams is fructose. We said here, there's 40, so that's got double the amount of fat in it than this. And this one's got 50. So 50 grams of, just say for instance, a normal day, a kitty comes home and has a, a drink of juice, 50 grams in a glass, 40 grams at morning tea. He, he goes and plays soccer or cricket and he has a, one of these things because he deserves it because he's worked hard and he needs to replace his electrolytes. There's a hundred grams of fat he's just stuck in his body. And the problem with all this is it's so easy. It's wham, whammo. Thanks for coming, fat cell. But again, you're not going to hear this because everyone who brings this to the attention of the public becomes sceptics. And they become, as we said previously, renegades. That's, are really trying to take people's money away. You know, the big business bottom line is going to be affected. You know, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried, you know, you know the kiddies meals, the, the healthy choices, you know. We won't have Coke anymore, we'll have orange juice. Wow, well again, you know, unfortunately the orange juice is a worse choice in regards to the fat epidemic, you know. Obviously if we look at it, how, the, how could I physically sit down and say, to myself and without conscience and say, well, you know, really that orange juice is a better choice because it's a fruit. Why? How do I say that? How do I, I don't know if I can physically sit there and align myself to that anymore and say, well, yeah, it is because it's natural, it's got to be better for me. But if I'm making fat in the liver, that can't be better for me. You know, that can't be. So there are things that you've really got to start to think heavily about what you are doing with 
fructose. And the thing is that you won't find fructose on any label, any food label. They don't need to distinguish between the sugars. So this is where you, but see they've got sucrose on there. So remember, anytime you see sucrose, so if it's, it's half of that is fructose. So again, we'll use an example here. We've got carbohydrates, and they have to list total, and then they have to list sugars. And if you get real lucky, they'll, then they'll go sucrose as a, another number. So these, this thing here, this had per serve, 250 mil serve. Carbohydrate total was 25.5. Sugars was 25.5. Now it doesn't mention sucrose because it's not sucrose, it's fructose. So you know that's 25 grams of fat that you've just gone, hmm, I've just had my healthy ribena. But you didn't just have half the bottle, you had the whole bottle. So that's times two. So you've got, oh my god, 51 grams of fat. Guess what? No Mars bar has 51 grams of fat. Mars bar have 10 grams of fat. So what's better for you? Well, yeah, if you're looking for fat loss and weight control and a happy liver, the answer is that. But this is where marketing and all of the food politics gets really tough because you remember we'll talk about the GI, you know, the low GI, natural sugars, etc. It really complicates the issue for the layman because they go, well, I'm eating good foods. I'm eating Uncle Toby's Sports Plus for breakfast. We'll look at a normal day. This is something that I can run you by today because I sat with a girl this morning at uh, the other facility and went through this with her. I said, okay, me, I want your diet. She said, okay, for breakfast I have a big bowl, she said. So I had to get out the shovel and start to dig and find out more. Big bowl of Uncle Toby's Sports Plus. And I said, why is that? She said, well, it's got bits of fruit and, and a multitude of uh, grains in it, and it's 97% fat free. I said, okay, cool. What else do you have with that? And she said, I have soy milk. Okay, cool. And then I have one times tablespoon of manuka honey, she said. I said, oh, wow, okay, cool. Okay, so I said, when you say big bowl, how big? And she said, oh, you know, it's a, it's a normal cereal bowl, it's about that high. And I said, well, what I'm going to guess, estimate, guesstimate, is that it's two serves, which is 90 grams, because one serve is 45 grams of that cereal. So then the carbohydrate total in that cereal, per that, is 29.5 grams. So, Nearly 30 grams of that total is in the form of carbohydrates. Through grains, sugars, etc. The carbohydrate total, as we said, 29.5. The sugar total sits around 21 grams. So there's, we've doubled that, so we've got 42 grams. Now I said, next to that, okay, so we've got 42 grams of sugar. Half of that, remember, because sucrose and fructose, because this is all where we're talking about, we're getting some fructose from the dehydrated fruits, and we're getting fructose from the general sugar, the, the sucrose. So half of that total there, 42, so 21 grams, is fructose. Okay, equals fat. So a 97% fat-free cereal all of, all of a sudden becomes a 21% fat gain cereal. And then she puts manuka honey on. Honey, honey's healthy, isn't it? Well, it is if you don't want weight loss. If you want weight loss or fat loss, honey is just like any of these other sugars. It's taken straight to the liver because it's pure fructose. Taken straight to the liver. And in one, I said one teaspoon or one tablespoon? She said, no, one tablespoon. So I said, that's three times teaspoons. We know one teaspoon, I said earlier, one teaspoon equals five grams of sucrose. 
So which, therefore, we're looking at fructose. So there's a 15 gram fructose total because it's five times three. So all of a sudden, she's got a 36 gram fat intake in something that's 97% fat free and healthy. Now, what's the good thing about this? Milk. Milk has no fructose. None whatsoever. So what? Are you able to drink? Well, I'm going to answer you. You're able to drink whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you what to drink. I'm here just to instruct on how the body works and how it uses stuff. Milk has uh, something called lactose, milk sugar, which is not fructose, and it has glucose. So, no detrimental effect in regards to uh, fructose. So, drink water, drink milk, drink uh, sugar-free drinks. If you know, drink beer, drink wine, because they don't have any fructose. Well, then it's fructose laden. But just there's an example of where most people would perceive they're eating reasonably healthy. And yet they're not. So, what could be a better choice? And obviously, I said, okay, well, what are you willing to change to? And she said, yeah, that's why I'm here. I want help. I'm 19 and I'm morbidly obese, so I need some help. I said, okay, if you're willing to make some change, I can give you some instruction that you can choose to make whatever adjustments you want. So I said, what cereals do you like? She said, no, I don't like wheat bix, I don't like oats, because I talked to her about the benefits of those with no fructose. And I said, okay, that's no big deal. Well, do you like, you know, breads? And she said, yeah. I said, well, guess what, breads have got no fructose, so that's a good thing. Um, if we're going to look at certain breads, though, and she said, yeah, I like the grainy breads. So I said, oh, fantastic, what about soy and sea bread? Yeah, great, so all of a sudden we made a difference. We went to Bergen soy lids, two slices at 22 grams in total carbohydrate at zero sugar. So no, the fact that we've got here then the fat total is coming through this, the linseed which is flaxseed oil which is an omega-3 oil Good for the heart. So no fatty acid deposits, meaning it's not going to make fat you can grab hold of. So we went through that and I said, what can you have on that? And I said, do you like things like Vegemite? She said, yeah, I love Vegemite. So that was one choice. I said, do you like eggs? She said, oh, I love eggs. So that was another choice she had. And then I said, what else do you like? She said, I like filling. And I said, well, guess what? There's no sucrose and fructose in that, so how about we limit that? If you like it, I'm not going to eliminate it, but we limit it. And she said, do you reckon I'm going to have that on Saturday? I said, fine, let's do that. So that was just an adjustment we made there. It's one simple adjustment that we made. Fiber rich, soy protein, all the eight essential amino acids that we'd ascertain through an animal based product. Linseed oil, which is a flax, which is going to aid in cleansing the arterial gut. A uh, fiber rich calorie decrease, total energy decrease because there's no sugar, none whatsoever. So, no fructose is being converted to a fatty acid. So, that was a subtle difference that we made. And I said, Is that something that you think you can continue to do so? And she said, Yeah, well, you know, the only thing I don't like about oats is that it takes time. And so, I talked to her about how easy you could do that. She said, I might use oats once a week and I might use the bread every other day. I said, no, you do whatever you think works for you. As long as you're aware of, you know, you are making benefit in regards to what your goal is, because you're not making deposits in the fat cell. So that was a real quick fix that we were able to do. And it was easy. It was good to see that as we went through further and further through a day, she was another, you know, she works in daycare. So she's 19 at a daycare, young lass, and she said at morning tea, well, you know, I don't have any structure, you know, it's like we're running around with kiddies and sometimes they're having a sleep, so I don't really worry about myself. She said, but you know, we can have a tea in Vicky's room, so I'll have a biscuit with my cup of tea. And I said, okay, how do you have that? And she said, oh, I just have it white with one sugar. And I said, oh, okay, tell me about sugar. So then I wasn't now telling her, I was asking, she said, well, now I know, that's got fructose in. So she told me, she said, um, I, I then questioned again, why do you do it? Well, why do you put the sugar in? I don't really know. It's more habit than anything. 
I said, do you think you can try without them? She said, look, I'll try. So that's up to her because she's aware of the costs. If she has that sugar, there's a two and a half gram deposit of fat because of half of its fructose. And the biscuit, that was something that she was willing to change. One creamy biscuit on average, like a, a cream to salt in a biscuit. So this is a Monte Carlo. 14 grams of fructose in one biscuit. 14 grams of fat. So you say not in your mouth, so you might have one and you know you dip it in your tea and hang on half the biscuit gone. So if you still drink it, so all that fructose has got into you. Oh, I didn't have a biscuit, I'm gonna have another one. So there's 28 grams of fat, I might have a third one. So there you know there's you know 42 grams of fat and wow, one was an upwards and everyone's like, oh I don't know why I'm not losing weight, I'm, I'm trying hard and I'm doing this, I'm coming to the gym and that's what your problem the gym. You know, it's not what you're doing at the gym, it's what you're doing when you're not at the gym. So, you know, again, I believe personally that this education is the, the foundation of all curriculum. I hate, I hate hearing nutrition as complementary medicine, alternative medicine. Does that mean, okay, you can think about eating? Because, you know, isn't nutrition nutrients? That's what keeps us alive. So how can I call it a complementary medicine or an alternative medicine? That's just crazy. It should be the medicine of medicines. You know, we've talked about this very briefly previously about Hippocrates, you know, the father of medicine way back, way back in the Ozark days, and he talked about, you know, medicine was food, and used food as your medicine. So it's been known for eons, but again, when the dollar signs become, you know, more and more prevalent and you prioritise the dollar signs, all the health fact is lost, and then all of a sudden becomes science fiction. So it is really scary to know that just there, everyone would make a choice that would lead to fat gain. It's just scary. And you're just not, you know, the minority group. You're the majority of people that are thinking exactly the same. So that's why I've tried to come up with five simple, um, you know, guidelines that you can use in regards to fructose control, you know. So, Again, don't drink sugar because it's just going to aid in fat production. Don't um, snack on sugar. You know, be careful at breakfast time because it is the most clinically uh, devastating meal of the day for most of us. You know, you even have, you know, um, uh, what is it? Uh, oats and you put some honey on it. Well, then all the, you've undone a lot of the goodness. So you've just got to start to think. You know, the sweeter something is, the more dangerous it is. Remember that. So I think in regards to, without going any further into all the enzymes and chemistry of how fructose is going to be more detrimental, I think I've been able to paint, paint a reasonable picture of how dangerous it is and how we're getting more and more of it than we should ever, ever be getting anywhere near. So remember, just use your palate as the best tool. It's the litmus test. If it tastes sweet, it is sweet for a reason. Fructose is the sweetest of all sugars. So once you start making things 97, 99% fat free, and they pull out the fats, well then they're adding the sugars and they're adding the salt to make it somewhat palatable. So, yeah, as we said, you might be taking two or three grams of fat out of the product, but you're adding 20 or 30 grams of fat through the back door. Very scary. Has anyone got any questions in the shop? I'll go back over. This one? Yeah, you're saying what? Carbohydrates. Yes, no sugar. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. Explain the carbohydrates with no, the no sugar part. Mm. I'm not going to go on carbohydrates. That's, that's supposed to be known. Mm. Yeah, no? Okay, so let's draw this table. So let's do a carbohydrate lesson and how it works. <coughs> so what is a carbohydrate first? Carbohydrate is any plant material. Okay, so anything that's a plant. So therefore fruit, grains, seeds. So your veggies. So these things here, carbohydrates, are made up of glucose, fructose, Galactose, lactose, and maltose. Any OSE means sugar. This galactose, lactose, lactose is milk sugar. Glucose.
glucose is blood sugar, simple sugar, it's the, the, the only sugar that... Well, it, all of these, to cut a long story short, every one of those, at some stage, is converted to that, at the end. That's, glucose is where the body uses these carbohydrates. So whether it's rice, a piece of bread, a, uh, to a lesser degree fruit, because some of it is going to be converted to sucrose. Um, so I won't get too, I don't want to take you too much through that whole back door of biochemistry. But the, the hidden message here is that carbohydrates are just a chain of sugars that are bound together. And it's just dependent on the type of sugars in this chain to what type of sugar it's formulated as. The one that we know we have to be really careful thanks to tonight is fructose. So fructose is going to be found in anything that's got and we talk about the mint. We've got sucrose, which is another one. Sucrose is half of that and half of that bound together. So anything that's got fructose in it, we've got to start to question, is it any good? Anything that's got glucose in it, well, the body can use it, but just because it, you can use it doesn't mean that it's not going to end up in the fat cell. Lactose has no fructose, maltose has no fructose, galactose has no fructose. So they're all okay. And they're just synergized in, in meals, in foods. You won't, again, they won't label lact uh, galactose and maltose on fruits. Maltose is predominantly in beer, again, with yeast and all those sorts of things. But if they've got carbohydrate on they will just the sugars. They have to list the sugars. So, they have to. So if you see carbohydrates and no sugars, it's yeah. fine. Go for it. Yeah, definitely. But, Carbohydrate. So this will help it be lifted up above it. You'll have yeah. fats and proteins, etc. Then carbohydrate. And it has to have total. Okay. And then it has to. Underneath it has to. It's part of the law. List sugars. Raisin bread cafe, you know, 
Grades, they're really the nasty ones, but they get grain great. Yeah, no sugars. Um, what was I going to? Bake beans. Bake beans. Okay, bake beans. Thank you, Leah. Tell me, good food, bad food? What's your perception? Yeah, so as we know, the oat, you know, is one of those. 
you know, wheat bits, vita bricks, and those sorts of things have very, very tiny amounts. You know, so no, you do because they use again to make it palatable because it's just a dry grain. You know, they add sugars, they glaze them in sugars, they add the dehydrated fruits to try and, you know, add some spice, I suppose, to it to make it palatable. Okay, that's fruit loops, frosty fruits, cocoa pops, nutri grain, you know, sugar, sugar, sugar. I don't know if it's a case of that And I've always had a when we started to make a couple of sale in two or three times a week, we've been doing it now for about three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's the wrong way. It is a bit thing. Yeah, but Guardian's sort of Guardian Special Code. They're low GI, you know, but they're still fructose rich, you know. So this is where the, the you know, the, this is why so every time you come to these things, they're going to be different because you'll get more and more in depth. The questions will lead to further depth. So, are they reasonable foods? They're okay, but they're not great. You know, like, you know, what is a great food is oats, for that reason. It supplies you with the fiber, the nutrients, the beta glucans that you need for cholesterol control. No fructose, so it's got to be a win-win. But again, it's what we add to it. So if you just put some milk on it, you know, that's fine, because there's no fructose in milk. But what we add is our milk, and either our brown sugar, and a bit of butter, or honey, or jam, or whatever we stick through it, and then all of a sudden it's like everything you've tried to do has become reversed for fat loss. Remember, this is the one thing again, so we can't, you know, to get tangled up in eating for health, and eating for performance, and eating for fat loss. You know that they're very, very different. So this is why this one thing, again, if we're trying to remove the doona, these are all the things that will aid in that. So that's where you're much better off going to, you know, a lesser refined, a higher omega free fatty food. A uh, fatty um, bread, grain, you know, so like soy and linseed or your nine grain breads or something like that. And then add your egg and real holistic foods that are high in those amino acids that are going to enable you to control, once again, your blood glucose with no fructose. Because when you see it, at a cell level under a microscope, and you see how all this works, and you see how it, uh, it's called the Golgi apparatus, a protein's packed, it goes to the cell membrane, it pulls it in, and then you see how the liver deals or metabolizes with it. It's just phenomenal how quick the speed, how all of a sudden there's cellular energy that's produced. It's phenomenal. And it's just like a turbocharger that makes all this cellular energy, and once energy is made, Remember, it's only two things can happen with it. You can use it or store it. You know, so if we've got more energy than we can physically use, we're storing it. Bang, 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 bang. And we're going, God, I'm going to the gym, I'm working out, I'm eating what I think is good. And yet it's it's horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. And it, I don't know, probably, oh, I guess maybe 75% of people I'd speak to about food when you first ask them, what's your diet like? Oh, my diet's pretty good. You know, and, and I think they believe it's pretty good. You know, I just don't think they're just thinking, no, no, I've got to tell him it's good because he's going to, you know, whack me over the face with a wet fish. No, you know, it's truly how the whole marketing catalyst catches everyone in. But that's what these people are employed for, to get people buying. So it'd be really good if you could just go in and go, well, I don't need to buy out of a cardboard box, I need to get this, I can see that, there's no hidden sugars in there, that'll do me fine. Lots of, you know, grain seeds, husks, as we know, because no sugars in those things. But it comes back to what are you willing to do to do it? You know, are you going to do the work? Are you going to put in the effort to decide on what is a good eating strategy and what is not? How much fructose in my diet, remember? Okay, how much fructose is in my diet equates to how much fat you're adding to your diet. It's scary. When you think of money, you can hear the cogs. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Lock it in the vault. So, is there any other questions? It was that right? Still, really. yeah, well, that's good. That's a good thing. If you've got less than worry about it, you've only got 10 pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, more chance of success. Natasha, you got any questions? I've got lots of questions. Oh, okay. God, this is what we're here for. Open um, for um, I really need, uh, well, just myself, as maybe guidance on what is, like, is it, is it, um, at the moment I do, like, six meals, four portion meals mm -hmm. a day.
today. And I think the diet still got obviously just by the Well tell me what you eat. Give me an example. Give me breakfast. So breakfast like I do is super K because of my diet food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Milk. Okay, well let's go. Twenty two point nine grams of carbohydrate from one serve of special cake, which is a 40 gram serve. There's 9.7, which is sugar. So that means that that's 10. There's five grams of fructose. That's if you have a 30 gram serve, which is, you know, two thirds of a cup. If you have more than that, well, you're adding, you know, you might get 10 grams of fat. It's 90, not yet. 0.1 gram of fat, nothing. But again, it's not. Remember, it's not. If it, you know, there's five grams of fat in that food, as you see it sitting in your plate. So it's, that's something you've got to be aware of. So straight away, it's not as fat free as you thought, but you know, next thing, what do you put on it? Milk? Just milk. Okay, dear, and that's fine. We know, tick the box, great food. And what comes with that? Uh, Juice, no, tea, no, coffee, no, no, no. water? Oh, coffee. Okay, how do you have your coffee? Black. Okay, no problem. Okay, what's morning tea? Morning tea, I have um, tuna. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. tuna, and a couple of rice crackers. Okay. Original. No yeah, rice crackers are, mm, we'll talk about that. Go, move on. Uh, lunch is normally some type of carb, so sometimes pasta with a little bit of protein, mm -hmm. so fish or salad with tuna. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm pretty, I do tuna for everything really. Yeah, do you like it though? I love it. Good, that's, yeah. that's it, tick the box in. If it's a struggle, it's a diet, we're not going to win. Okay, afternoon tea. Afternoon tea is usually like celery, mm. um, fruit, grapes, um, oranges, mandarins, apples. Maybe contemplate change. See how much fructose? So then it's not a fat free meal, it's a fat deposit. Big one. Okay. Yeah. Evening meal? Dinner. Uh, something like fish, just plain grilled fish with celery. Perfect. You mate, you're nearly there. You're nearly there. But the hindrance is. If you're doing fruit every day, you, you know, you're making kilos of fat deposits over a month. And you go, wow, ah, what's happening? Why, why, why? You know, I'm eating well, but those things add up. Much better alter, um, alternative is going to be, you know, your 20 to 30 grams of um, mixed nuts. Those sorts of high in omega-3s, you know, walnuts, cashews, pistachios, blanched almonds, what have you, in the afternoon which is going to suppress a specific hormone in the hypothalamus of the brain, which is going to keep you a lean, moon fighting machine. And remember, zero fructose. Yeah, so there's that subtle thing. I've got a, I'll print you up the healthy eating shopping list and you can have a look at that. A rice crack is bad for you. Tell me what you think would be good about them. You know, it's great. Like, just, just the other night I was reading one of those, you know, men's health, men's health, about how cicada compared to Super refined, aren't they? They are, you know, you don't, you know, go to a corn cob and you pull up and there's a rice cake there. It doesn't work that way. They're, they're super refined, they're aerating, that because the endosperm has been removed the outside of the seed, it's just like putting glucose straight to your vein. It's just shocking. It, well, put it, do it, put it on your tongue, let it sit there, it'll go, it'll just melt immediately. So it means it's in your system that fast. There's no fibre in it. And this is this crap again with. Sodium, you know, oh, sodium, it's going to kill you if you eat sodium. Now, if I've got someone who's got 190 over 110 with blood pressure, I'll, I'll start to contemplate sodium then. But for the layman, they're, they're 25 kilos overweight, which is dangerous. But we're worrying about a few grams of freaking sodium. It's insane. You know, but this is, again, dietitians and shit. They're not in the real world. They sit behind the desk and they look at clinical report after report after report. But they're not seeing people after people after people every day. They're not in the real world. They're not. And this is the whole thing with academia. You know, this is well, one of the reasons I left, you know, was because I'm dealing with, in many ways, blinkers, you know, they don't see real life. You know, and it's a matter of trying to get out there and say, no, you can eat much better food. Is rice cracker okay? It's okay. Maybe once or twice a week. But no, much better food. You know, you need seeds, grains, husks, you need lots of things that you can see and bite into and let this thing here called the stomach work hard at breaking down. The stomach can go on holidays when you have a rice cake. 
So it means it's costing your body nothing to break it down. Whereas if you had a, a piece of soy linseed bread with a bit of avocado and some cottage cheese or ricotta cheese or something, just as an example, well, that's a much better food source. No sugar, no 